at a time when high tensions between the United States, Cuba, and the Soviet Union, the leaders and citizens encountered a new age of nuclear weapons on a mass scale that almost triggered the brink of a nuclear war. Kennedy's exploration of the new diplomatic methods of handling this crisis kept the world out of a nuclear World War III. The exchange between Kennedy and Khrushchev have served as an example for future leaders to serve the world problems. The tensions of a nuclear weapon movement throughout Cuba and the Soviet Union, known as the Cuban Missile Crisis, instigated to the United States that there was going to be a nuclear war and encouraged President Kennedy to react by communicating with Cuba and the Soviet Union to halt the movement of the nuclear weapons throughout Cuba. Leading up to the crisis, on January 1st, 1959, Cuban dictator Fulgencio Batista fled lost the confidence of the Cuban people and fled the country, leaving Fidel Castro to be the new premier of the Cuban government. At first, the United States supported Castro, but this suddenly changed when Castro seized U.S.-owned sugar states and cattle ranches in Cuba. The United States embarged trade with Cuba and the CIA began to convert to operations to topple Castro. In 1960, Castro, along with Cuba, signed its first trade agreement with the Soviet Union. During the Castro Revolution, many Cubans had left for the United States. The Cuban citizens, along with the U.S., aided Army personnel trained for the invasion of April 1961. This invasion of the Bay of Pigs resulted in the Cuban Exile Army to be captured and convinced Castro in Cuba that the United States would stage another invasion. This led to the exchange of nuclear missiles between Castro, the leader of Cuba, and Nikita Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union. On October 14, 1962, a United States U-2 spy plane flew over Cuba and photographed the single most important and dangerous discovery that the United States had ever encountered. Following the photographs taken, they were finally delivered to President Kennedy early on Tuesday, October 16, 1962. At this time, President John F. Kennedy convened a small group of highly trusted advisors called the Executive Committee of the National Security Council, also known as XCON. This council would be responsible for reacting quickly and precisely to deter what could possibly start a World War III and the end of mankind. During the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis, Cuba became the center of the world on October 1962. For 13 days, the world entered the brink of a nuclear war and faced the reality of what could have been the greatest destruction of life on Earth. As the XCON committee got together to discuss possible options, Kennedy's military officials advocated the bombing of the Cuban Missile Sites or invading Cuba. One of Kennedy's most trusted advisors, Robert F. Kennedy, became the key advisor to President Kennedy during the crisis and was a lead voice in opinion through the crisis. As the committee argued for a nuclear strike on Cuba, all ideas were considered, even the possibility of a nuclear strike on Cuba. The window of opportunity at this point was closing rapidly and Kennedy needed to make a decision fast. Kennedy was pressured by all of his military advisors to bomb Cuba, expecting that the Soviet Union would not respond with a war. Seconds felt like minutes and hours felt like days as the window of opportunity continued to close rapidly on President Kennedy and the United States of America. The two main ideas at this point were either to bomb Cuba or to set up a blockade around Cuba for further prevention of the exchange of nuclear weapons into Cuba. This decision wasn't one to be taken lightly nor to have an ignorant response and spark a reckless war path of destruction. At the time, a blockade was considered an act of war, so it was given the name as quarantine. Although quarantine would be the best option, if it was put into action, the United States would lose the element of surprise air attack on Cuba. This left tensions flying high between the exchange of ideas from Kennedy to his advisors. 
Also, at the time, President Kennedy did not want any of this information being spread to the American people. Following the order to quarantine Cuba on October 22, 1962, at 7 p.m., President Kennedy was faced with the single greatest decision mankind has ever had to face. And with days dwindling, Kennedy addressed the nation and reveals the crisis and his course of action. This crisis, leaving everyone puzzled, leading to the encounter of a new language, one that has never been explored, one that has never had nuclear weapons on a mass scale ready to end the world as everyone knew it. The exchange of this information had leaked to the Soviet Union on October 23, 1962, the day after the address was made. The Soviet Union requested a meeting of the UN Security Council, and President Kennedy followed up this request and signed an official proclamation of indirection to go into effect the next day. The exchange of ideas and information during this conference led to a number of Soviet ships reversing their course before reaching the interdiction line on October 24th, 1962. The ships that changed course led to the stoppage of the exchange of possible nuclear weapons being imported to Cuba from the Soviet Union. And because of this halt in the exchangement of nuclear weapons, it changed the outcome of the crisis from getting any worse. Meanwhile, during the time where the ships for changing course, diplomatic efforts continue at the UN and the US Strategic Air Command raises its defense alert status to DEFCON 2, the highest that it has ever been raised to. Shortly following that, on the next day on October 25, 1962, the newspaper columnist Walter Lippmann proposed a trade of Soviet missiles into Cuba for US missiles in Turkey. With these tensions reaching an all-time high, any idea were taken to, into consideration to stop the exchange of nuclear weapons for the Soviet Union to Cuba. On October 26, 1962, further efforts were made to stop the exchange of nuclear weapons by the U.S. Navy boarding the Soviet ship, the Markula. Alongside with this effort, Khrushchev sent a letter to President Kennedy that arrived on October 27, 1962, the following day over a public radio in Moscow with an official proposal for a Cuban-Turkish trade. Soon President Kennedy got wind of this broadcast and does not tell XCOM about the secret proposal. Simultaneously, as U.S. U-2 spy plane strays over Cuba and is shot down by the orders of local Soviet commander without the permission from Moscow. In this exchange of deadly ordnance, an American pilot is killed and the U.S. airstrikes at Cuba loam the next day. Kennedy exchanges information with leaders of Turkey and assures them that they must be a part of any public agreement to end the crisis. He strongly warns the Soviets that if they do not remove the Cuban missiles at once, then American forces would remove them. On October 26, 1962, Khrushchev receives Kennedy's acceptance proposal but, but publicly ignores the Turkish aspect of the second letter. As the gravity of what would have been the single most deadly event the world would ever have seen on October 28, 1962, over radio, Khrushchev accepts a letter, and the crisis ends. After the storm settled on no November 1962, negotiations continued on the detail of the removal of the Soviet offense weapons from Cuba. Relations became strained between Cuba and the Soviet Union. By November 20th, all missiles and bomber aircrafts are removed and the U.S. forces return to normal peaceful alert levels. On November 21st, 1962, President Kennedy officially ends the quarantine. If it wasn't for the key exchange of crucial information between the country's leaders and the exploration of unencountered language of nuclear war, the world as we know it today might not even have existed, and all life, including ours, would have been erased from the universe by nuclear war.